We're on the rebound. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm casting things twice with all your Pac Patique Deepest Epic. This is a card that casts instants twice. If you cast an instant, it gets rebound, which means it's exiled, and then at the start of your next turn, you can choose to cast it again. If you don't, it actually stays in exile. So if you're trying to maybe bring that spell back with something else, you do want to cast it that second time. This is also one of the gods from Lost Caverns of Ixland, which means when it dies, it turns into a land and you can transform it back. This is one of the easier to transform ones, but it takes a few turns because you do actually need to tap and untap the land that it's on. If you want to accelerate the tapping on the land, there's ways you can do that. I'm not running them in this deck. Uh, things like the Kelpie, which can be used to untap your own lands. Instead, sometimes you just want one extra mana, so it's fine if Pak Patik dies. What makes Pak Patik so interesting is if you cast a spell that's instant and attached to an adventure like Source Code Serpent, you actually can cast the adventure creature side after. So let's say you bounce something to your opponent's turn uh, on your opponent's turn back into their hand. Awesome, that's very blue stuff to do. Then on your turn, you're getting a seven mana creature for free. That's just one of the cool tricks you can do with Pak Fatigue. With modal spells, spells that have uh, multiple things they can do, like Supreme Will, which is either a counter spell or a card advantage. Similarly, uh, Archmage's Charm, or you find a Villain's Lair. These are counter spells or card draw. So you can use them to counter your opponent's stuff on their turn and then cast it again to filter your hand, draw cards, and do other things that help you get an advantage. Unlike, well, most mono blue decks, it's not all counter spells. Like most mono blue decks, there's a lot of counter spells in this deck. That's how you keep yourself alive, especially in a 1v1 format. But it doesn't feel as fun as, you know, casting an adventure and getting it for free. That's what Pak Patik does in the most wonderful of styles. Because Pak Patik only cares about when you cast things from your hand, we also have a couple ways to bring spells back into our hands so we can cast them again. And Pak Patik does this with such great style. I would say that uh, this deck is fun when you get to use it the way Pak Patik works, and the deck is not that fun when it just turns into mono blue oops all counter spells, which unfortunately sometimes does happen. So we're going to take Pak Patik into the queue and we're going to get real blue. Thalia and the Gitrog monster. Thalia and the Gitrog monster are a pretty rad duo. They make your non-basic lands come in tapped. They make your creatures come into play tapped. And they also can ramp because you can play additional lands each turn sacrifice creatures or lands to get more cards in hand and it also has first strike death touch so you know good luck with the whole attacking thing they straight up just like win at combat Ooh, nice boots no don't exile my graveyard i'm using that probably Chilling now on counters. We actually didn't have a counter spell for their commander before. They had had early ramp. Oh, they have no white mana. Huh. Okie dokie. Just keep vibing and hanging. The mono blue way. If they didn't do anything this turn, we're going to blink of an eye. Draws me a card, puts their booties back in hand. Uh, will I be at Magicon Amsterdam? No, I won't, but I will be at Magicon Chicago. Do I feel weird playing mono blue? Absolutely! It is uh, always strange to be playing mono blue. This is a bird. Boots for the Boyd! Yeah, I'm not that big on, like, the, the draw-go kind of gameplay that you see here. Um, I just... Get that into it. 
So I'd love to get to save this for when uh, Pac Patik is out. But since I have another one of those like bounce cheat in a big creature, I'm actually pretty down with just hit the bird, hold up a counter for Thali and Gitrog, or I guess Vorinclex. You remember that bird I gave you? It's gone now. Pac Patik coming out. I'm not able to counter their commander here, but I can throw it back into their hand. Binding, I guess I could throw my commander back into hand too. I could also let that resolve just so we get the land. Uh, hand, please. Ta-da! It's a 6-6! Six, six. You love 6-6. Six, six. Maybe you don't. I love 6-6. Six, six. Solemn. Simulacrum. Yeah, you can have that. I'm just gonna discover the formula. Ooh, discounts. It even discounted my commander perpetually. Oh, hey, hottie. You want to discount my instance? Bet you do. I think Towerend holding up counter spells is, uh, is a good way to play this next turn. Since this will make birds for me. Okay, they're technically not birds. They're drakes, which are birds. We are all in agreement. That's birds. Drakes is birds. I'd like to use this when my commander's out, even though it is like a more specific counterspell. So I'm gonna use disallow. Rich allow. Disallow. Drakes are just featherless birds. Do do they not have feathers in this heart? They have feathers! Okay, cool. Mythos of Nethroy, R.I.P. I got a bird. All is good in the world. Fuck Patik! Let me at him! You know what? I'm, I'm actually gonna, like, dig for a land. Diggy diggy land. No! I mean, that's a really good card, though. Fine. Only because it's a really good card. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Um counter target spell, and this way I get the card draw off it next turn, and our opponent leaves the game, because we have locked them out of their strategy, we're dealing a lot of damage each turn, and Pock Patik is doing Pock Patik things. Mythweaver Pock. The best thing I can do against Pock is counter Pock, because it's a really good card. It's so good, in fact, because it replaces its own mana value. When Puck is in play, if a land enters the battlefield or lands enter the battlefield for the first time in a turn, you get a copy of those lands, which means Puck is refunding its own mana cost and getting huge while doing it. Green has a ton of great things to ramp into as well, so we're going to hope to uh, kind of one for one those as we play this game. Um, Puck will probably not come out on turn four. It'll probably come out a little earlier, uh, so there's a chance that I won't be able to play the Jin first, even though I'd really like to. Love to get to play the Jin. He's so hotty. He's so hotty. Yeah, so they're they have three mana now, which means Punk could come out next turn. If he does though, he won't be able to have a land follow him up. You have the same French press as me? Oh cool. It's very convenient. Since Punk can come out and really my best recourse against Punk is you know, countering him. Uh, I'm going to play Heraldic Banner. Yes, a blue deck having Wash Away open. It's more likely than you'd think. Utopia as well. So they're they're going for more ramp uh, in order to have Pot come out. Yep. Since it already can't uh, copy a land for the turn. Bye, Pot. They have five mana, so next turn... Um... They could have Pock 
come out again. So we are going to pass the turn. Ideally, I'm making a copy of Pock because we learned about a stupid interaction between Pock and Pock Petite on a previous game, uh, which you might end up seeing here. Ooh, wait. Are you going to go for the lockout? So a Shia is wild because if Pock tries to enter the battlefield with a Shia out, they, um... They make infinite copies of Puck, and it just causes the game to be a draw. Wild. I don't know if they'll risk that. Chat wants me to crash the client. Okay, so they played a land. And here comes Vorinclex. Ooh, yeah, no, I, um... <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Especially because these are lands. Cavern of Souls. We're going to name Weezard. You could also name God, but, like... I really need to. You want to see this happen? I'm, I'm going to hold up Sublime Epiphany or Dismiss. Um... I'm gonna hold a dismiss over Epiphany here because um, their stuff is lands. It's it's kind of like an emergency exit button, and if you don't understand what the uh, the the game ending combo is, Ashaya makes your non-token creatures into lands. Okay, great. This is a non-token creature, and because it sees itself as the first land entering the battlefield each turn with Ashaya out. It makes a copy of itself, and that's not a token copy, which sees itself and makes a copy of itself. And you have to keep sacrificing these, so it just kind of makes a bunch of punk that all die. It doesn't do anything, it just locks the game out. Unless you have a way to, like, sacrifice your, uh, Ashaya or destroy it. Cool. Anyway, we won. Yeah. Lord Skitter Sewer King. Probably going to be a rat colony deck. Which is actually kind of tricky for me because, well, it's hard to trade with rats when you're in blue. I go first. I have Malcolm who can help me find stuff. I have a counter spell for a little later on. And this also might not be Rat Colony. But Lord Skitter makes me think there's going to be a lot of rats in this deck. Uh, sure, Cavern of Souls. We can name God. We can name Fish. I'm going to name Wizard because I think it's actually the most common creature type in my deck. This is not a wizard. This is Tishana's Tidebender. Yeah, and using Tidebender to um, take away Lord Skitter's ability sounds pretty good to me. All right, so here comes Malcolm. I might want to keep Malcolm back to trade, but I'm going to go in first. I'm going to drop Swan Song because honestly, I don't think it's going to have any targets here. <laughs> This makes a rat every turn, which means that rat colonies will get bigger for each other rat. Ooh, Lord Skitter's Butcher! I'll just counter it, sure. That makes a rat as well. Do I feel like going for Pock Petite here? Yeah, all right. I'm not even gonna wait for Malcolm to do the thing. Malcolm, I don't even care about what you're doing. Gate. No, it's, it's gonna be mostly rats. I'm sure there's some things worth negating. He's mostly dealing with rats here. Oh, crippling fear naming. Rats! Great, uh, I am going to not return this to the command zone, since this is now ramp, which gets me closer to Holebreaker Horror and these other cards in hand that are big and splashy and flashy. I am going to go for a classic move, though, since I have six mana. I say classic. We are putting a stop, so when they draw, I can... Excuse me. I don't know why it doesn't prioritize those. Fairy Wizard, uncounterable against a black deck. Great. If they have something stronger than just a rat, we'll make them discard it. 
Oh, it's a rat and a rat and a rat and a rat. I'm actually fine with the duress because um, right now it just hits Seagate restoration. There, I made them discard a rat. The chances of them drawing a rat off that are so high. Their deck probably has over 30 rats. Tishana's Tidebender is safe. Do you play Lord Skitter? Or do you go for another rat colony? Did they play a land this turn? No. So they could go for two rat colonies here. Rat. Mm hmm Yes, very rat. Mm hmm Yes, very rat. Trade. And they know exactly what I'm holding open here. Our friend Hullbreaker Horror, since I hit seven lands. This triggers each of their combats. So even if I don't hit its ability on the first time it comes down, I could hit it in the future. Smack my rats up. Rats. Rat, rats. Yeah, rat decks are a really good budget option. They're very aggressive. They're an easy, fast way to get wins. And if you only have a couple wild cards to spare, I feel like it's a good way to go. If you the end a rat colony, there ain't gonna be any rats left. Here comes their rat. There's nothing left to exile since they bajugabogged. And they know about the Hallbreaker Horde. Do you want to still swing in? You get six damage. The answer was no. You can do this on uh, either player's turn. I'm actually going to do it right now, though. Castle Vantress. Nope. Great. Counter spells are nice. Rat colony. Gets countered. We'll bounce a rat. Future spell thief will let me make a copy of something, uh, including one of my own spells. I don't feel pressured to cut off Lord Skitter here, so I think I'll save for the double spell next turn. I know, we're just, like, bouncing rats around. I can also flip this back over. Um, I don't really want to. I think that I'm not casting an instant this turn. I have things with flash, but those are not instants. Curse of Silence naming Rat Colony. Oh, that's so rude! As a rat colony enters the battlefield, Lord Skitter has a trigger for an ability. We are going to counter the trigger, take away his abilities. Uh, we're going to bounce the rat token to hand. Sure. And I'm also going to use the Futurist Spell Thief. Um, I will bounce another rat colony to hand. Less attacking power here. Make a copy of my Tachana's Tidebender. So I have another creature available to me. And now, no text. No longer makes rats at the start of turn. They could attack with Lord Skitter to reset that. I don't know if they'll want to. Great. I'll flip back. The uh, Temple of Cyclical Time becomes Pak Patik. Um, we've got this and this. I guess I'll play this old man. And I'll bounce another rat colony to their hand. I'm saying, good game. Well, I don't know if good's the right word, but we bounced a lot of rats, which is what we do when we're playing on the rebound. Admiral Brass, unsinkable! Well, maybe your uh, pirates can't be sunk because they come back from the grave. I'm gonna throw down my Jawari ruins to start. Uh, Admiral Brass is a very strong commander. She's able to kind of do it all, and she is enemy number one while being supported by really strong pirates. And pirates that are now uncounterable! How dare you! My name Wizard. 
Yeah, it's a typal deck that's running a lot of pirates, and I can't counter them if they use that land. I've got some ways around that. Not that many, though. I'm still gonna do my best. Wily Goblin! It's a pirate. Makes a treasure. Hallbreaker Horror is, by the way, one of those answers. It's gonna be tricky to survive that long. Kite Sail Larcenist! Hold up one sec. I do need Lance. Brawl is now a treasure. Like, oh yeah, of course he is. Of course he's a treasure. They could sacrifice the goblin to cast and then reanimate it with Admiral Brass. That's so cute. Luigi, I don't know what you're trying to say. They can't whiff because they had a guaranteed pirate in the graveyard. For all my most treasured commit. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really work. They have a cavern of souls. I cannot counter it. They didn't attack. Aww. I wanted to trade Pock Fatigue. <laughs> yeah, they're ramping me. If they if they kill my Pock Fatigue, that's what I want. So I can play the Hullbreaker Horror. That's what I wanted to do this turn. Ah, uh, Admiral Beckett Brass. Uh, by the way, this would still seek a spell for me. So it's just like, it's okay. Gives me a random four drop. That's gonna be better to uh, flash and siphon her. Grab that consider. Who's coming back? Spyglass Siren. Getting a plus one, plus one counter onto the Larcenist. Here's the Siphoner. You consider. My commander to the command zone. Decline. Hallbreaker horror into play. And look at that. We can bounce things. The finality things, unfortunately. Uh, would be just fine. They did they get replayed. But I think we have to hit a flyer. Discover the formula. Yes, please. As much as I could do. I can still cast Wash Away. Now that I, uh, I have played a land. But it has to be a spell cast from outside hand. I think I can also just, like, do what I can. Ooh, double brass? Is 
Is there a lore reason for Brass to be resurrecting pirates? Um, I'm not entirely sure why she has, like, reanimation this time. But she's, like, the founder of their new cities. Ooh, is that a mirror image? Not a uh, pirate, a shapeshifter. Not a changeling, specifically. Larcenist comes in. Blam. This is, by the way, not the, uh... This is just, this is just the original one. Johnny! They give us a seven-month resub! Well, wait. I gotta make the thing pop up. There it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't believe I managed Survival to spend in difficult. Thing seven months. But I'm doing my dang damn best. Hello, opponent. They're getting a creature in their graveyard. Uh, this is actually something I can counter, so one second, I am going to use this. Discount the things in my hand. I read their tolios. I mean, I know why. Why'd there have to be two of use? Mills more cards. I see a pirate there. Okay. Corsair Captain! Let's let their pirates some more. Waiting until they just pass into... Great! Now they're not able to recast the Beckett Brasses, so we are going to bounce uh, Admiral Brass into hand, and then we are going to grab the Consider, and we are going to cast it in order to put Admiral Brass back into their hand! Dispute. He's not helpful here. I realized I could have actually countered the spark double because it's not a pirate. I forgot. You're doing fine! Allbreaker, you're, you're holding your ground! You're fantastic. We love you. Oh, this is an alchemy pirate. Like thieving magpies. Please stop hitting me, Mr. Larsenist. Alright, so I can give that minus four, minus O. Oh. We can rediscover the formula. The big thing is protecting the hole breaker from that entering the battlefield. If we bounce it, we pass the turn. Counter every pirate after their first one? Yes. So we're going to cast Torrential Gear Hulk here. Turn it to their hand. Use this to recast Discover the Formula. Can bounce uh, brass into hand to prevent more damage since we're also going to be shrinking the larcenist.
This gives us big discounts. That is a lot of cards in hand. Hey, Rhystic Study, you actually might do something for me. Using a map on the Larcenist. I think if I have a way around the uncounterable, not currently. Cracking it open again, make that bigger. Everyone? Are you sure? Oh, right. They think it's lethal. Um, of course they do. Because it should be lethal. In a different world, this is lethal. Pay the ward. We take two. I will draw two and drop two, bouncing a map. I could also bounce this, since I feel like I'm starting to... Yes, this is exactly what I needed. I'm safe to bounce that next turn. I'll drop actual factual counter spell and wash away we're gonna swing in with these two buddies commit is also a non counter spell so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this confounding conundrum on this turn Ooh, wait I should have done the shark first this is fine though the ward Old war is a good bounce but since my hand is full and we have uh, I'll say infinite bouncies pop that our comeback turn baby I like the super discounted uh, virus attendance as a blocker Kite Sail Larcenist. We could just bounce it on the stack, or we could Super Duggle Ultra Mega Bounce it. Oh, we're winning. I can counter anything. Play to your outs. Play to your outs. Get real wild with the stack. Turn one, Cavern of Souls, no problem. Okay, slightly a problem. That was a that was a hard fought battle. Wish my commander did more. Omnath, Locus of Rage. This is a land based ramp deck that is looking to get out their good friend Omnath. Because once they do, Landfall makes 5-5 five, five Elementals. I will let the Kami resolve. Uh, it'll get them an extra land this turn. Ooh. Those 5-5s, five, five, they ain't just 5-5s. Five, because so whenever an Elemental dies... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Uh, I'll get Rada with Gloria Scale. This allows them to play lands off the top of their deck. I'm also tempted by the ring. Because I would be. Druid class! Some play additional lands each turn and then turns into a big boy. I'll turn that into a bird. That's a bird. I've seen that before. That's a bird. Look, now you have a blocker for my fairy mastermind. Oh, I didn't get another land. 
That's okay. No Pock Batik for us. Let's be drawing two, discarding two for the filter. I love it. We just chill. Hang vibe. I think Escape to the Wilds is very worth countering. We could either hold the Kindred Denial or we could get down the Heraldic Banner to buff up our blue creatures and hold up Memory Lapse. Into the north, sure, gets them a land. Hi, Matt. Matt in the chat. Mystic Sanctuary lets me bring back a counter spell and put it on top of my deck. I think that is totally fine. I should say it's good for us. And it's also enough for our opponent to feel locked out of the game. This turn I was planning on playing Pak Patik, uh, so we could hold the memory lapse and hopefully counter whatever big threat they have. If it's Dark Commander or anything else. GG. Amalia Benavides Aguere. There's about gaining life. She's a two-drop commander, so she comes out early. She's got wards to protect herself once she's on the battlefield. And she can even wipe the board. If you happen to have explored enough time and you explore each time you gain life with her out in play. But as many of you already know, the name of this game is going to be countering their commander because my hand is great at countering their commander. I'm actually not holding up a counter spell for this next turn. I'm gonna play the Hottie Jin. This gives me an attacker, a blocker, and a discount on my instants and sorceries. Nice, that's two ways for them to gain life. Um, I have a way to bounce things. So am I going to play my commander here, Puck Patik? Attack in, since this is death touching. Chill and vibe for a turn. Chill vibe and hang. You don't think she's going to resolve this game? I don't know. I think she might resolve. Resplendent. Angel! Brenda, do I have enough for Kindred Denial and then a Sword Coast Serpent bounce that? Get myself a 7 7 swinging in the air. Oh, yeah, they know what's up. We're winning. Mono Blue! It. Well, makes people feel bad. The first sliver! But is it a real sliver deck or is it the first and only sliver? We'll find out. Uh, I want some earlier counter spells, bounce spells. I think this will be fine. We can do a turn one consider, or we can save it for when we have Pak Batik out. Oh, and a ley line of anticipation. Everything will be castable at instant speed. Well, um, I mean, instant, flash, flash, instant. Same hat. Uh, I kind of want lands. And since they can cast things on my turn or their turn, we will still hold up as though we have counter spells. They will play things in response to us. So like, I am tapped out. So if there's something they want to land, like Replicating Ring, now's the best time to do it. They did it. Swing in with Malcolm. I could drop a land or maybe commit here. I have two counter spells. I'm gonna drop Kindred Denial. If they play first sliver, um, I'm going to try to copy it with Futurist Spell Thief. Yep. They pass right through. We'll attack in again with Malcolm. They don't have five mana. I'll drop. Nightclub Bouncer. I'm going to play Heraldic Banner. They did miss a land. 
geological appraiser that's going to let them discover, and they discover something that costs three or less, and it happened to be Bro. That might get them some land. Who's the person in Kindred Denial? Like, in the art? I don't think it's anybody specific. It's a werewolf. She looks really cool, though. Not Kindred. Never has been. Blue, and some people in chat already knew what I was going to do. It's bouncing their ley line. Just trying to get them to play at sorcery speed again. She does look really cool, yeah. I'd say that, like, her art reminds me a bit of... Not... Oh gosh, I'm blanking on her name. The lady who makes the cats. She hangs out with Wingrace. Hung out with Wingrace. Oh yeah, Teferi. That's that's such a sliver card. Joel Reel, yes! She she reminds me a bit of Joel Rail, because like she's surrounded by the animals. I think that's cool. You think she looks a bit like Storm from X-Men? The white hair? Yeah. Alright, so they're cracking open a flooded strand. Uh, in response to them doing that, I'm going to put Teferi into their library so it gets forcibly shuffled. Y'all know I'm extremely petty. Especially when it comes to Teferi. They are replaying the Ley Line of Anticipation, and they get to untap two lands. So they have three mana up here to do with as they please. And I'm going to do with this as I please by playing my commander! Oh, your Pak Patik, deepest epic. I want to do the uh, little Sword Coast Serpent bit here. Ooh, Relic of Legends. We might get to do the thing, right? And I'm also going to be attacking for a lot of damage. Oh, hey, Malcolm's back. Hey, Malcolm. Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. Ooh, do I want a copy of it, too? I'll just dismiss it for now. We get to draw and drop. Let's drop this land. Oh, wait, that was just the draw card off the spell. Okay, well, we draw land and drop a land anyway. Take five. Still not a sliver. No, I'm, I'm still not seeing any slivers from this guy. This is at five counters. Eight is when it turns into eight mana rocks. Teferi, who slows the sunset. Teferi, who I think would be very good in my deck. Yeah, they're playing, I would say, lots of just generally good control cards. They tap Baral, they untap here. They've got plenty of mana for the first sliver. If they'd like to cast it. <gasps> there it is! It's the first sliver! And it cascades into Valky. Valky um, is able to exile any of these from hand, but in response, I think we can just go ahead and boop. By the way, they had to change the rules of Valky because it used to be you could cascade into Valky and then play Tybalt. 
which was a mistake. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that rebound. What's up, first sliver? How you doing? You're pretty big. They're not entirely tapped out. They have two mana here. Okay, so they're going for Valky again. That gets Malcolm. I don't mind that. I like that Puck Fatigue is able to kill Teferi in one hit, though. They still have one mana up off of Valky with the Relic. Uh, sure. I'll trade. So I can cast either side of this. Because I'm casting it from Exile, um, I would not be getting the uh, the other piece here. So I'm just going to cast a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, free. It's a 7-6 thanks to the banner. Yeah, great. Thanks, Dismiss. Yeah, I don't need you. <laughs> Dismiss is like, don't you want a counter road card? It's like, a little? I do a little? Fairy who slows the sunset. Puck Patik's gonna get in a swing here onto Fairy. And they have three cards in hand, and I have none cards in hand, which is why I'm going to tap a tap a untap a untap a artifact creature land. And we are going to cast Memory from the Grave. It's going to refill their hand. It's also going to refill mine. I know. Unblockable 7 6 or draw a card. The struggle. Nice Nykthos. Finding the old gods, taking out to fairy, maybe? Baral, okay. Baral dies. Rippy peppies. You miserable, you miserable old man, you. It is dangerous to be refilling their hand, but I need some goodies too. Time warp, ugh. I hate when they take an extra turn. Uh, they may attack with the first sliver, hoping to recast it. More mana off Utopia Sprawl. It also, by the way, shuffled their Uro back into their deck, which was kind of the additional benefit there. We trade with the Serp. The Snocky. Are you a dragon? You are a serpent dragon. My beautiful devotion. An ocean of devotion. We have Confounding Conundrum in this deck because uh, one of the most common commanders right now is still Mythweaver Pock. And you gotta be ready for it. There's also fetch lands and stuff like that, and it's pretty good against them. The ring is about to pop off. Yep, it's one turn away. Outrun's Epiphany, that is another extra turn. Great. I love when my opponent takes three, maybe more, turns in a row. Oh, hey, Nikki B. I got plenty of discardables here. I'll drop an island. Boop. So they could flip over Nickel Bolas next turn. He turns into a pretty dang good Planeswalker. And here comes the ring. Yep, they got all the mana in the world. And a death-touching Nickel Bolas. They're flipping him over. Oop. Swap. What do you want to do? You want to reanimate? Nothing really great here. Like, the serpent's fine. You want to kill a guy? You want to kill a god? Brawl. 
Sure, whatever. And Itali, uh, I'm actually going to consider here. Where are the slivers? You know they don't have any. Archmage Emeritus, uh, I think it's going to be pretty useless for them. Oh, right, I draw anyway. Whatever. It's good for me. They got Negate, so completely useless, and Sunfall, which they don't want to do because their creatures are better than mine. Camille is going to stop me from countering their creatures or anything else. Uh, thankfully, the counter spell we, ha we have in our hand has another thing. They could counter their own Sunfall. Wow. Uh, I will kill Valky and let this turn into a guy, I think. Actually, no, because I want to kill Nicol Bolas with an attack. It was a very fair Atali. They discovered a Chromatic Lantern! How cute. Yes, please. Free spells. Squirsh away. Stuff can't be countered. Tori Disruption. Your stuff can't be countered. Founding Conundrum will draw me a card. It'll also uh, increase the devotion on Nykthos to blue. Use Puck Patik to take out the Bolus the Arisen. I think I have to minus here. Archmage Emeritus. For two devotion into Chromehost Seed Shark. Into Confounding Riddle to look at the top cards of my deck and trigger a bunch of other garbage. Legendary lands aren't that new. There have been legendary lands since we've had legendaries for the most part. Um, oh, interestingly, Tales End and Sublime Epiphany still let me hit Cascade. I can I can stop the ability. I do like that Teferi is kind of demanding attention to him. Yes, they've got all the mana in the world. Well, shucks, look, they could get all the gods out of their deck. I wonder what gods they have. Since they have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of mana, they could flip over a Tali. Which means I do need to prevent a lot of damage from him. He's also unkillable. I'll need to technically prevent two this turn. So I'll prevent two. Oh wait, do they have a kill or a bounce? Sort of. They have a key, and the key is likely to get them an instant that can do something about that Archmage Emeritus. Let's see what it was. Ah. Uh, Doomblade! And we're gonna die to Atali. As it was meant to be. It's five killer good stuff. Nikon Zeal, current conductor. An explorer commander that's looking to cast explore spells. When you explore, you can get lands into play from your hand, and you get extra counters on Nick and Zil, depending on what kind of thing you happen to find. Uh, we are going second here, which is a little odd, because we don't have a two-mana counter spell to try and stop Nick and Zil, or I guess a one-mana counter spell, since she can come out on turn two. We're going to get fishy, though. Ooh, that is a turn one cavern of souls. What even is a counter spell? Hi, Uncounterable Nikonzil! Bullying Fish Commander. Well, they named Merfolk. There's a couple other uh, exploring Merfolk. It's it's like the sub-theme of them. Boop! Eesh. Sentinel of the Nameless City. 
You can keep that on top if you have a land in hand. This is a great repeatable way to explore because it gets you map tokens. And it's also like pretty big. Ooh, maybe they don't have a land? No, they have a land. They got beside you. More explore. Oh, they were going to have such a good turn. Hey, Kumena. More fish. Still don't have a counter, so instead I'll go for Heraldic Banner. So, it's okay, so I have a counter, but they would have to cast two spells in a turn, which not happening yet. Not yet. Dead Light Ranger. Ooh, love it. Let's see what it finds. It gets two explorers, shapers of nature, and a land! You got land. Uh, I could play my commander here. I'm planning on just uh, flashing out Snapcaster, since this is a three power creature with the Heraldic Banner. And potentially blinking something back into hand. Snippity snappity. Here comes the slappity. I can't kick it, but... That's okay. I don't need to. And I don't really want to bounce that, since it has such a good enter the battlefield. This or this is much better as a target. Okay, Mikan's ill. And Explorer's Cash. I could actually counter this or bounce this. Um, I'm just throwing the Godzilla back in hand. Your commander will never stay on the battlefield. Make your Jade Light Ranger bigger. I wish I could steal it. It has to have a mana value of one or less. Patik, here to be a nice big bird. Tweet, tweet. Tail's ending that would have been pretty funny. Give them a land that doesn't do anything. Hey, what's up? Become land. Oh yeah, Pak Patik. We let our commander die. We decline, and she becomes. Eesh. Whoa! They didn't play anything. Okay, wild. Sure. I'll have a quick study. Like Club Bouncer seems adequately rude. I wonder if they have something cool with Flash. <gasps> it's Coco! Um, I'll counter it. Nikanzil and Kumena? Nope. Oh, River Herald Guide. Nice explored. I see a silver gill adept on top of the deck. Oh, I have enough mana for Hullbreaker Horror. Also, I have a lot of stuff at instant speed, so... We pass the turn! And I suspect this may be our last turn. <laughs> So hey, I'm Holebreaker Horror. I'm um, currently an 8-8 thanks to Heraldic Banner. And I'm a delicious shrimp. Casting fish gets more fish. Yeah, I think that playing uh, Collected Company in a commander format is really tricky. 
but in something like this deck specifically, it probably hits almost every time. It depends on like what their density of um, spells or, or like creatures and non-creature spells is though. Cash me if you can. Putting that card draw back on top. Passing the turn because everything we do is at instant speed. I could also attack here with my lobster. Yeah, and I can still cast counter spells even if they don't counter the spell just to get the um, return back to hand off Hullbreaker Horror. This commander helping you ramp in blue can actually be really nice. Tempest Caller. Okay, it comes into play. It taps my lobster. Here comes the bouncer. We're going to bounce Nikonzil back into hand. And then we're going to bounce Deep Root Waters back into hand. Then I'm going to trade with Silver Gill Adapt. And our opponent's going to leave the game. As you do against Mono Blue. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you want to watch me record these live, come on over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where my channel actually voted on this deck to be built. If you want to suggest a deck for me to build or update, let me know in the comments below. Um... I do take a list from there so I can build more decks and showcase them on stream and in more Brawl Stars videos. And sometimes they end up being decks that don't really vibe as much with me. You know, Mono Blue is not really my thing, but I think as far as Mono Blue decks go, this is a more interesting one. Getting to take advantage of the way that adventures and other instants work with Puck Fatigue means that you're doing something a little different. You're also casting tons and tons of counter spells, but it's at least a little bit less counter spells, right? Uh, if you're looking for the deck, it is in the description of the video. And if you want to, you know, suggest a commander, just make sure it's something that's legal in Historic Brawl. You can check that on Scryfall, by the way. Thank you so much for watching, and have a brawlful day.